Dear learners, greetings of the day. In this session, we are going to say about quick sort. Myself, Devi Arogya Vanita, Associate Professor of Computer Science, working at the Standard Fireworks Rajaratnam College for Women, Sivahasi. In this video, we are going to see about sorting, the various types of sorting, and how to implement quick sort. What do you mean by sorting? The arrangement of data in a preferred order is called sorting, and it is an important concept in the data structure. By sorting the data, we can easily access the data as well as quickly access the data. The best example of sorting is a dictionary. There are two categories of sorting. One is internal sorting, another one is external sorting. In internal sorting, all the data to be sorted should be kept inside the main memory. And in external sorting, if the data is highly voluminous, then the memory cannot hold all the data at once. So it has to be stored in the hard disk and this is called external sorting. And next is about the types of sorting, quick sort, merge sort, heap sort, bubble sort, selection sort and insertion sort. And ours is about quick sort. So it is very interesting to know the history behind the quick sort, why it was developed, who developed the quick sort, and so on. The quick sort was developed by Tony Hare in the year 1959, and he published an article on quick sort in the year 1961. It is one of the fastest sorting algorithm. Uh, to be uh, said in precise, it is ultra fast sorting algorithm. And it follows the dividend conquer recursive strategy to implement sorting. And the interesting story behind the development of this algorithm is while Tony Hare was working on a machine translation project uh, to convert Russian into English, he needed to convert a dictionary of words. So he sorted it. He sorted it using the quicksort algorithm. Next is about the main idea behind the quicksort. So there are four steps. Let me explain in precise. First, we have to check the number of elements. If the number of element is 0 or 1, then we can stop the process. Next, we have to choose a pivot element. It is an important step and there are a number of methods to choose the pivot element. Further, the given list should be divided into two disjoint groups in such a way that the elements which are less than the pivot element are kept on one side, that is S1. The elements which are greater than the pivot element are kept on another side, uh, that is S2. And after dividing these into two disjoint groups, we have to apply the quick sort recursively on S1 as well as S2. After phase 1, partitioning is phase 1. After phase 1, we have to merge the results. If we merge it back, that is the process of conquering, we will get the list get sorted. This is the main idea behind quick sorting. Hope you follow. Going to give an example, uh, consider the set of seven numbers as uh, seven, eight, seven, four, ten, three, and five. And among these elements, we have to choose one number as a pivot element. How to choose the pivot? That is a question. We can choose the first element as a pivot, or we can choose the last element as a pivot or we can find the median of the first, middle and last element as a pivot. And one more interesting case, we can choose randomly any number as a pivot. And in this example, I have taken 
the last element as the pivot. So, 5 is considered to be the pivot element. So, based on the value of the 5, quick sort is a comparison basis sorting algorithm. Each and every value given here will be compared with the pivot element. If it is less than the pivot element, it will be placed on the left side list, that is list 1. And if it is greater than the pivot element, it will be placed on the right side list. Let us see. So I have chosen 5 as the pivot. And the next thing is I have to divide it into two groups. One less than or equal to and greater than on the other side. I have to check the numbers one by one. First, number 7. Number 7 is greater than 5, so it goes to the right side. Number 8, it is also greater, so goes to the same place. Number 7 is also greater than 5, the same for, for this also. And when comparing the 4 with 5, 4 is less than 5, so it has to move to the left side. And 10 on the right, and finally 3 again on the left we have completed the first level of partitioning and now we are having two sub list s1 which consists of 4 and 3 and s2 which consists of 7 8 7 and 10 so again we have to apply the same on these two sub list let's see in 4 and 3 i have chosen 3 as the pivot because the last element should be considered as the pivot element and compare 4 with the 3, 4 is greater than 3, so it goes to the right side. And in the second sublist, I have chosen 10 as the pivot and I am comparing 7, 8, 7 with 10 and all those values are less than 10, so it goes to the left side one by one. So second level of partitioning is also over and now looking to the left side, it consists of only two values 3 and 4. If the number of elements is 1 means then it cannot be split further. But now we have to apply the mechanism on 7, 8, 7 once again. Among 7, 8, 7, 7 the last element is chosen as the pivot. 7 is equal to 7, so it is placed on the left list and 8 is greater than 7, so it is placed on the right list. That's it. Every leaf is having only a single element. That is the end of the partitioning strategy. And the next phase after partitioning, partitioning is the dividing mechanism and the next phase is the merging phase. It is the conquering mechanism. So, whatever available on the left hand side, left list will be placed to the left of the pivot and whatever placed on the right list will be merged towards the right of the list. So, I have already uh, placed 7 to the left of 7 and 8 to the right of 7 and again further merging. In further merging, the 4 will be placed towards the right of the 3 and again 7, 7, 8 will be attached to the left of 10. And now the final merging, 3 and 4 is placed towards the left of the pivot 5 and 7, 7, 8, 10 is placed towards the right of the pivot 5. Ta-da! So the quick sort is very, very simple. It is very easy to implement and it is an effective sorting mechanism when compared with all the other sorting mechanism. It is considered to be one of the optimal sorting techniques. I hope you understand the mechanism behind the quick sort. And now let's move to another mechanism or another method for choosing the pivot. In the previous example I have chosen the last element as the pivot and now in this example I am going to choose the median of 3 as the pivot. So for this we have to select the leftmost, middle and rightmost element and order them and again we have to choose the middle one. This very same example, the first element is 7, the middle element is 4, the last element is 5, 
and I'm picking out all of them out and sort them and now the pivot once again is 5. So since after median of 3 also the pivot is the same value, we'll be having the partition as like before. So again the 5 is the pivot, everything else, everything which is greater than 5 will be going towards the right side and everything which is less than 5 will be going to the left side as shown in the slide. That's it. So, this is the pseudocode and this pseudocode consists of totally four different steps. Step number one, it checks whether it has a minimum of 10 elements. If the number of elements is less than 10, then it is not effective to apply quick sort. It could be better if we apply insertion sort. So look into this page. If left plus 10 is less than or equal to right, then do the quick sort. And at last we are having the else. Otherwise, if the number of elements are very minimum, we have to apply insertion sort. Step 1, we have to find the pivot and the median of 3 strategy is applied here and step 2 partitioning partitioning is carried out with the help of two different pointers called i and j i pointer starts from the left and move towards the right and j pointer starts from the right minus 1 and move towards the left Whenever the po element pointed by I pointer is less than the pivot, it can be incremented. Similarly, whenever the element pointed by the J pointer is greater than the pivot, it can be decremented. At one point, both get stuck down. At that moment, we have to check whether I is less than J. If if so, then we can swap the elements present in the position i and j. And this process will be continued until i and j crosses. At last, when we come out of this infinite loop, the next stage is, we have to swap the element pointed by i and the right minus 1 in order to restore the pivot. So the second step is over and third one is after this step we have obtained two different list uh, sublist and on those sublist we have to obtain the quick sort. So two times we have called it again one on the small elements that are the elements which are lesser than the pivot and another on the large elements the elements which are greater than the pivot. That's it this is how it works. And let me explain it with a simple example. So here we are having two different pointers I and J. I points the first element that is the leftmost element and J points the element right minus 1 because the pivot is moved towards the right. And do you remember the mechanism to move the I pointer and J pointer? i gets incremented if the value pointed by i is less than the pivot and j gets decremented if the value pointed by j is greater than the pivot and now at this scenario both the elements are not satisfying the condition so we can't make a move then if we can't make a move we have to check whether the i is less than j yes i is less than j then we can swap it so 7 is swapped with 3 and now the new list is again here and now we try to move the pointer i 3 i is pointed towards 3 and 3 is less than 5 so 3 it is the pointer i is moving from 3 to 8 and next 8 is less 8 is greater than 5 so we cannot move forward so we have to move to the j pointer 
j pointer is pointing 7 which is greater than 5 so I can move and now j pointer is pointing towards 10 which is also greater than the pivot so I can move that too but 4 is less than 5 so j cannot be decremented further so it gets stuck again at this step we have to check whether i is less than j s it is less than j so we have to perform a swap so 8 and 4 are exchanged now and again we have to continue with the process i is pointing towards 4 which is less than 5 so it can be moved towards the right and 7 is not uh, less than 5 so it cannot be further moved and checking on the j side j is pointing towards 8 which is greater than 5 so I can move it towards the left and j now is pointing towards 7 which is also greater than 5 so I can move it further towards the left and now 4 which is less than 5 so further I cannot decrement j at this point we have to check whether i is less than j no so we have to come out of the loop and we have to swap the element pointed by i and pivot that's it the first level of partition is over and now you got a list check into the list closely the value of the pivot is 5 and to the left side we are having only smaller elements 3 and 4 and on the right side we are having the larger elements 8, 10, 7 and 7. What next? So we have to apply quick sort on the left list separately and we have to apply quick sort on the right list separately and later we will be getting the final list. Hope the learners understand this example and I want to uh, recall this algorithm once again. Step 1 is we are choosing the pivot and step 2 is uh, we are uh, moving uh, the pointers to implement partitioning and step 3 is recursive application of quicksort over the divided sublist and this is for the smaller arrays and this is the source uh, behind my work. So you can refer this also. To conclude, uh, the quote by Benjamin Franklin, for every minute spent in organizing, an hour is earned. So organizing, that is sorting is very, very important. Thank you. Happy learning.